Alright, welcome back guys. Today we're going to do another episode on the C706 build. Uh, hopefully we get the suspension tied up today and get this car rolling around and uh, we might even take it for a test drive today with no quarter panel on it, but of course the body work will be the next stage of this process, but hopefully we get this thing rolling around and uh, see what happens. Yeah, ready to drive. We got our new hub bearing in, so we're going to go ahead and get that whole rear, uh, rear knuckle put together. And uh, yeah, like he said, I hope to go ahead and take the first spin and see what it does. Alright guys, we'll get this up, we're going to get the spin on this car and get the suspension finished up. We got our new spin on here. We went ahead and fed the new CV axle up in there. You can see we got our CV axle through the new hub. And then uh, just going to go ahead and stick on our lower ball joint. That's what connects the lower control arm to the spindle. We'll go ahead and get that nut put on there. And we also got to get our um, upper, upper ball control. joint. Yeah, we'll do that first. Set to the upper control arm also, and then we can tighten the axle down. And then after that, we will go, I guess, start putting our rotor on, get our emergency brake cable set up, and then go for getting the caliper put on. We got our lower ball joint started on there, our lower ball joint nut, sorry. And uh, we're about to go and tighten that up, feed our CV axle through. Tighten up the rest of this. Alright, All right, now we gotta slide our axle through the hub and then we're gonna connect our uh, actual upper ball joint to the upper control arm. If you look at it, it's got a uh, stud right here, like I said, on the ball joint. We gotta push, put some leverage on this, slide up on this stud and get our nut started, and then tighten it down. And uh, after that, we'll be pretty much done installing the rear, sus rear spindle. Muscle it up, dude. I'm trying. <laughs> My fat ass is sweating too much. <laughs> oh. You want another hand? No, I got it. There we go. There you go. Boom. There we go. Now I just got to put our nut on, like I said, tighten that up. This rear spindle's installed, and uh, we'll go getting on the front side of, I guess, putting the rotor on right and getting the e-brake cable hooked up. We got to put that nut on there. And that assembly is done. Alright, this is the only ball joint that's actually spinning, but we got lucky and it's got a Torx bit head on the outside of the stud towards the ball joint. So we're putting a Torx bit on it and we got the wrench on the nut and we're going to tighten it down like that. Uh, like I said, it's the only one that gives us a little issue when we went to snugging it down and tighten it up. Whoever invented those ratchet wrenches are bad, so I'm going to... I love them. <laughs> Alright, we got that snugged up. Uh, that, that assembly's done. Next, we're going to put our axle nut on. And snug that up. Now we got the we got our new hub. This one had a little bit of noise to it, like we said in the last video. So we ordered a new hub. It came in yesterday. We're going to go ahead and unbolt it and uh, install the new hub and start putting this, uh, I guess you'd say the rear spindle back together. Yep. Get all of our new stuff swapped over on it. And I know that parking brake is going to be a pain in the ass to get put together, but we're going to do our best. Yeah, that parking brake might be a little, little tricky, but we're going to make it happen. All right, so we got to separate this because we already put this new bar on. So we're going to get this off, get this thing set up where we can start going back together on the car. We're going to go ahead and start by uh, just trying to do this parking brake as an assembly before we put it on the new spindle. Um, 
so that we're not trying to fight it with all the other stuff on there too. These clips are pain in the butt, and I'm sure there's like a special tool to like make all this perfect, but I don't have it. Whatever. So we're using basic needle nose pliers and kind of fighting with it a little bit, but it's doing the trick. Got it. Alright, now the spring goes on the bottom. Spring goes on the bottom. And what's that do? Just keeps them. Uh, from rubbing on the inside of the rotor. And this assembly right here is actually for your actual electronic emergency brake. These, these new Corvettes got an electronic emergency brake on a button. You just pull them and push it to disengage it. And this is how you adjust it right here. You go in and out <clears throat> on that thing. Well, if I can get it to unscrew, yeah. So that's how it adjusts out. So it grabs more on the inside. Your rear brake rotor goes around and it has a drum on the inside. We'll shoot, we'll show them. Yeah, we'll show them. So this is the inside of the old rotor, and that's basically just a drum on the inside for your parking brake to go around. So that's how that works. Yep. We got our new uh, backing plate here. We got our parking brake assemblies put on there, uh, all assembled right. New hub bearing and our new uh, spindle here. We're gonna go ahead and put it all together and get it put on the car. After we get this dust shield put on, this uh, whole assembly right here will be complete and ready to actually be put back on the car uh, on the downhill slide of the suspension. except for the parking brake shoes and this thing is smooth as glass now before the last one must have took a hit because it was had a rough spot didn't it yeah it had a rough spot in it for sure all right guys we're gonna put this on the car after that we gotta like i said install the uh new brake line and put, put the caliper back on it install the rotor and then like i said i think we can put the wheel and tire on it and get this car pretty much rich functional and uh rolling around also we gotta put this uh I think it's a rear diff cooler. We're going to put this rear diff, we got a new rear diff cooler that got damaged in the, in the wreck. We've got to put that on and after that, I think we'll be pretty much ready for a test drive. We're going to go ahead and tighten up our CV axle nut. Go ahead and pop in my parking brake cable. And I've never done this before, I've never worked on a Corvette. So I'm hoping it will just pop through and lock into here and I don't have to pull any of this else apart. So we'll see how it goes. This parking brake cable is whipping our ass. We're trying to get it to pop in there and we're not having any luck. So what we did is undid it from the rest of the parking brake cable system right here. We're going to go ahead and pop this in first and then we'll fight putting it back in on that side because I think it will be easier to fight putting it in over there than through here. Got it. Like a ball. It popped right after that we got it to pop right back in. Now we're going to see if we can connect it down here on the other end where we just disconnected it. Hope it'll go back together fairly easy and we will have the emergency brake assembly done and completed. After that, what uh what's next? Uh, what do you think? Rotor. Oh, speed sensor, brake warning sensor, rotor, caliper, 
put some brake fluid in it, tweak the brakes, put the wheel and tire on it, put a cooler on it, go do burnouts. Yes. What are we going to do? Burnouts. Fire <laughs> smoke. All right, that was a little two-man job. We didn't video it, but uh, we got our e-brake cable right here. We got it connected back up to the linkage. And now we're about to go back down with the car and get the, uh, get the rotor set on it, start putting the brake line on it, get the caliper on it. Tightening up our speed sensor here with my two feet long extension because that's all I had. And we can pop that into the, uh, the caliper once it's done. So I guess we're ready for the, the rotor now, ain't we? That high dollar rotor's about to go on. We had to do some research on that rotor. That rotor, like I said, we said in our first video, that rotor was uh, $3,130 from the dealer. We ended up finding one from a company in Florida and get it. we got it for actually $1,300. So we almost got, we got it for less than half price. We did good on that. I guess caliper time. Caliper time. Damn, it's bent. Oh my god. Can you, see Can you that? tell how bent it is? Dang. That, that's why it's both, the bent, both, both caliper bolts from the impact of the accident. Well, this Corvette's got special brake stuff. We just realized this uh, this pin that holds in the brake pads is all bent. So, of course, we can't just go down to AutoZone and pick one up. We'll have to go order two new pins for it again. Puts us on standby again before we can drive. But we're gonna, what we're going to do with this uh, caliper, we've, we've inspected it very well. It's got a few scratches and stuff in it. What we're going to do is just ba basically just sand it down and paint match it and just go back and make it look as good as we can. We think we can make this thing look brand new. Uh, yeah. Who knows what this would cost. And I don't even want to know what that thing costs. really no severe damage to it besides little scratches and just small, small damage. So we're going to basically refurbish what we're going to do. And then uh, if you look at our pads, we got a couple little ding spots in our pads and stuff like that. We fixed this car 100% right back the way it should be. So we're gonna go ahead and just get a set of new pads for the rear too, why not? We're gonna go ahead and start tackling some of the bodywork stuff so that everything uh, is ready to go when we get all the, uh, the rest of the parts that we need and get the bodywork painted and stuff. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull off this plastic piece right here so that JT can start straightening out the uh, little that gives you that reinforcement bar right there. It's just a cosmetic thing, but we're gonna go ahead and get it straightened out first. And then we gotta pull this bracket off, which we have a new bracket to go on it to start getting going back for ready for the quarter panel to be put on it. And other than that, uh, after we get that uh, those caliper pins, we'll get that put on and get the wheel on it, and we'll get this thing on the ground, and then we'll start doing the, start doing the body work. Yep. Got that bumper reinforcement off but well now we got this looking at this and what we're going to do is just basically straighten that edge out that way we can get that pull back around like it should instead of replacing that whole brace right there because it actually is glued in it pretty big job to replace and for that light of damage we'll just go ahead and straighten it and like i said it's all covered when you put the bumper cover and everything back on it anyways and it'll look It'll look pretty good and pretty back OEM once we get it straightened and uh, painted and put that together. And that's nothing structural, it's just cosmetic stuff and like you said, nobody will see it once, once the bumper cover and everything's on it. So. 